guys, it's Shelly. In today's video, we are going to be going over six simple steps for you to achieve your axle off ice. I'm also going to be mentioning the number one mistake to avoid while doing your axle. You're not gonna wanna miss this, so stay tuned. Step number one for this axle is that step into that forward outside edge that leads us into the jump itself. So what we're gonna do is we are going to be going backwards off ice and our arms are going to face outside the circle as you see here. We're gonna bring our arms and our legs in to our axis. Right now at this point, all of our body weight is over our right side. So we're on a right back outside edge at this point. As I'm going into this, I'm gonna do it just like how I'm gonna go into a Walsh jump or an axle. So arms are out, I'm looking over my left shoulder. I bring my arms together and my free toe to my skating heel. And then I'm down on my knees right now. I'm gonna rise up and then step over to that left forward outside edge. And as I step onto that left foot, my arms and legs are going to swing back. That is our setup for our axle. And here it is, folks. This is the biggest mistake that people make on their axles is when they do that step, they do not transfer their body weight over to the left side fully. So sometimes you will see people go into their axle and when they step, they are more on an inside edge, their knee buckles in, and you'll notice that their right side, the shoulder and the hip are dropping or sagging. When that happens, that's gonna cause a lot of issues with your jump going forward that's gonna cause a tilt. Your body's not going to fully be able to take off properly like it needs to in order to make this axle work. So believe it or not, right here, this is the biggest mistake people make, is not fully committing to that body transfer from the step on the back outside edge to the forward outside edge. So you guys, focus on this exercise, this is huge. If you can do this exercise and get that feeling of the body weight transfer, you are going to have an easier time getting this axle executed. So as you can see here, this exercise, that's all I'm doing. I am back on that back outside edge, then I step over to the left side, and I feel it on my foot. Even when I step, I feel that outside of my foot having more pressure than the inside of my foot. And I'm not flat footed, I just have a slight pressure into the outside of my foot so I could almost, in a way, create that edge off ice. That is super important. You're just gonna keep repeating this until you really feel that body weight transfer over. A good rule of thumb is if you even hold a one foot glide, and let's say if you take your free side and you drop it, what's gonna happen? You're gonna start to be pulled to the non-skating side, right? You're gonna be pulled away from your axis. This is what happens when we don't fully transfer our body weight in this axle. And of course, we have another body weight transfer coming up later in the jump. But this is the first step. Work on that first body weight transfer of doing the back outside edge into the forward outside edge. The next step in this axle is going to be the kick through for the leg. Now we're gonna kind of reel it back a little bit and we're gonna just slowly blend this step into our first step that we just went over. So you're gonna do this first step that you went over. As you step onto that forward outside edge, your arms and legs are back. And as you step forward and once you get down into that knee bend, you are going to rise up, and as you're rising up from that knee bend, you're gonna just swing your arms and legs up and through, and you're gonna create that H position. This is our starting point to go into the full kick. So in this step here, this is going to just help us get used to that arm and leg movement for when we actually do the actual lift itself. And when we do this swing, you are going to feel all of your body weight over that left side. So if you are swinging through right now and you are feeling like you're maybe falling over to your right side, that is a good indicator for you that you possibly did not fully 
transfer your body weight over the left side in the previous step. So now we're gonna take it the next level up. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did in the last step, except we're actually going to hop up. So instead of just swinging your arms and legs through, now you are going to add the lift for this. We are not gonna rotate though. We are just simply focusing on blending the last two steps into this third step right now. So as you step onto your forward outside edge and those arms come back and you get down into your knee, when you're starting to rise up from your knee, that's your jump. You are getting down in your knee so you can have lift and power into your jump. That's what the knee bend's there for. If you don't have knee bend there, then in turn, your jump's gonna be very tiny. Now, I'm not saying go all the way down in your knees to where you're literally down on the floor. That's not gonna work. But you need to sink down enough to where you can get a lot of power from your legs and push yourself up. So as we step forward onto that left forward outside edge and we bring our arms and legs back, we get down into our knee and now literally we're gonna use that leg that's bent, that skating leg, and we're gonna push ourselves up. We're literally going to jump straight up and as we're jumping up, we're gonna swing our arms and our legs through to hit that H position. With this exercise, literally, if you are having trouble with this exercise and you're feeling like you're going over to the free side and not staying over the access side or the skating side, that means you need to rewind and we need to start from the beginning and feel that body weight transfer. That's usually where the mistake comes from. Now, another thing too to mention is direction of that kick through leg. When you're kicking through, you wanna make sure that kick through leg or that knee is going forward. It's not cutting across your body to the left side or that hip is not opening up over to the right side. The direction of that leg and the arms have to be going the same direction because if they go a different direction, then that's also going to throw off your rotation or your direction for this jump when you do actually attempt this axle. Now we are getting to our second body weight transfer right now, and it is with the step over. So we're gonna do everything the same as we did in our last exercise that we just did. Now the only difference is, instead of just kicking up and through and not rotating, we are going to rotate. This rotation is going to be similar to the Walsh jump. The only difference is we are landing in a reversed H position. So in this position, this is where um, that body transfer happens. So as I'm kicking up and through and jumping in the air, you want to not only just get height, but you also want distance. You want to act as if you are jumping over a hill. So not only do you have to jump up, but you got to jump over. So when you're first stepping into that left outside edge, with that right leg kicking up and through, it's not just kicking straight up, you're actually starting to get some reach and distance to go in front of you when you're doing this. So when you're in the air here, that's where the body weight transition happens. You're gonna feel when you're first kicking up and through that body weight, your skating axis is over that left side. As you jump up over the hill and you're rotating, you are then going to transfer it over back to the right side. So you start on the left side with that axis and now we're going back over to the right side because you need to land back in that reverse stage position. So if you're doing this exercise and when you land, if you feel like you're going on your inside edge, that tells you one thing. You did not fully transfer that body weight over up in the air. A great way to kind of get an idea for this, if it's not working out without with just being on the ground, you can put something on the floor, whether it's like a small bag, or even if you have a yoga mat, try jumping up and over the yoga mat 
to do this exercise. Sometimes that works out really well. It gives a skater sometimes a visual and something to really, you know, try to push yourself forward to do. Um, but those are great ways to try to help you out with this exercise as well. So keep in mind, where do you feel your body weight? Are you able to hold in balance? So pay attention to the feeling of your body when you do that landing to see if you did fully transfer your body weight. So basically after we hit that reverse stage position, we're gonna just hop twice counterclockwise. This is basically to kind of trigger our body and our muscle memory to keep that rotation going. Even though we're not doing it in the air, we're doing it slowly right now so our body can remember that same feeling. So that's why it's super important that we get that last step with getting the reversed H in order because this is essentially our back scratch position that we're gonna be going into and working towards. And when we do a back scratch, Where's our body weight? It's over that right side or that right axis. We don't have any pull from the left side. If you do have pull from the left side, that's also gonna cause your jump to become tilted in the air. So all you're gonna do right now is do the last step with the lift, the reverse H, land, and then take two hops counterclockwise to try to get that air position started. All right, you guys, we are at our last and final step for this axle. Now, just like the last one we did, we started, we did two hops counterclockwise after we hit that reverse stage position. So now, instead of doing two hops, you're gonna hop one full way around and then hit your landing. And as you're hopping around, you're gonna slowly pull your arms and your legs in to try to mimic that air position and then a nice strong checkout for your landing. That's the axle. We really broke it down. That's how you started off slowly because these jumps, you have to remember, they happen quickly. Now, when you first go into an axle, are you gonna do every single step perfectly? Absolutely not. When we work on axles, when figure skaters work on axles, they don't just do the jump itself. They have to work on all these bits and pieces. So in this video, you saw all the little bits and pieces that come together to make the full axle. And doing these bits and pieces slowly, separately, and then slowly incorporating them together is what makes your body remember those steps for the axle. And then before you know it, you're gonna be able to do these steps quicker. So that's the only difference here between what we just did and the axle. The axle is just all these steps really fast. So your next step, once you're getting these down, try to make each step a little bit quicker. And what I mean by that is, which steps would we make quicker? Definitely our step over when we go from the kick through up over to the reverse stage, that has to be quick. And then the step where we rotate in our back scratch position and pull in, that's gonna obviously have to happen quicker as well. So we're able to rotate in the air, not land and do it. So a great way for you to do this is first do it slowly like we just did, and then slowly speed up those steps that I just mentioned, so that way you could actually start to rotate up in the air for the axle. The snap, which is that step over, or that kick through into the reverse H, and the pull into the back scratch position in the air are the points that have to be the fastest in this jump, but they have to be correct. So, Typically another mistake that a lot of people make, which everyone makes this mistake, is when they're trying to make it quicker, they start to kind of lessen each step, which in turn makes their jump a little bit tilted, 
or they don't get the full kit through, etc. So just keep that in mind, you know, try to fully do these movements quicker then. So the kick through into the reverse H into the back scratch. So when you actually go for the full axle, try axle back scratch. That way you could kind of keep that rotation going. So if you're cheating your axle, let's say, you could at least train your body to keep that rotation going around with the back scratch. So it's always good to still attempt the axle, even if it's cheated, but add the back scratch to it to keep that rotation going in that counterclockwise direction. And of course here is the full axle. And right now we're gonna break it down. So that's how all of this blends together. As you could just, as you just saw, that's the axle. All of those pieces are in the jump. So it's very important to go piece by piece, get your body and muscle memory to remember those pieces so then it can eventually all come together. So you guys, that's the axle. Six simple steps. I think you guys can do it. Comment below, let me know if you're gonna give this a try. And be sure to also check out my other videos. I have off-ice axle exercises. I have a bunch of new off-ice videos for you guys since some of us are not able to get to the rink. So please check those out and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.